and you've got nothing to lose. Probably this graphics card right here uh, failed because... So this is problem number three, and this is faulty VRAM. Alrighty guys, we got three graphics cards here, and they all don't work. How do we get them out? I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna give them some tech, yes, loving, aftercare this is going to be some extended hosing these things in multi-purpose spray now this is something to look out for with gpus because i got given this gtx 980 i was told it wasn't working uh, they tried everything to it and then i just looked at it and it had a bit of rust on it and i decided to just hose it down with multi-purpose spray like give it a lot of this stuff and it eventually ended up giving out a signal off the display port and the DVI port. So the HDMI port doesn't work properly. But one thing I did try with this card is that I got a display port cable, DVI cable, and essentially an HDMI cable and just reinserted the cable so many times that you're taking off any rust or dirt in the actual ports themselves. Another thing too was on the PCIe finger here, it also had a bit of rust, which I got off as well. So this card ended up coming back to life and I essentially got it for free. So that makes for, I guess, another three tries at something that you can do if you don't have a heat gun, for example, and you're trying to uh, use that method, which I consider that a last resort method. I do get some success out of cards in the past, but it's usually around a 10% chance that the card will come back. This, however, is just seeing. <laughs> this method I'm doing here today is just giving it the best chance it's got before you do go over and apply a lot of heat. And so what we're looking at here is this GTX 780. This here doesn't give out a signal. I've tried booting it up. It's got a lot of corrosion and rust on it inside the fins and also on the back plate itself, which the back plate is also exhibiting signs of it's been hit somewhere and banged onto something. So that is gonna get first up on the block. And then we got this one here, which just gives out a B2 error code. Now, one thing is if you're diagnosing GPUs, you can quickly tell if it's a uh, hardware problem straight away, because it gives out a B2 signal. That means it generally can't even initiate the VBIOS to get the graphics card working from the get-go. But regardless, we'll still give it a try and see if it maybe is something just clogging up the GPU. Maybe a bit of metal uh, dust has fallen off the cooler and it's connecting with something on the actual GPU board itself, which I have seen in the past. Then we got this last one here, which decides it kind of wants to boot when it wants to boot. And then once it makes it to Windows, the driver just clonks out and you get a black screen with no signal. So. We're gonna get into uh, giving these GPUs a nice hosing one by one and talking about everything we can do to not only make it uh, look really good from its current state, but also more importantly, see if we can get these GPUs working again. If you're in the market for more cores and threads than you can handle on a Zen 2 Threadripper, then you need a motherboard from the best. ASRock's TRX40 Taichi motherboard has a 16-phase power design with 90 amp chokes and MOSFETs. It also includes a Hyper M.2 quad card. On top of that, you've got Wi-Fi 6, addressable RGB, and an active cooling heatsink solution to keep even 64 cores under wraps. Links in the description below to find out more.
And here we are with the four most common problems now I face when I'm trying to fix up GPUs. And unfortunately, one of these problems I have never been able to fix in the history here of the channel. And we're gonna go over that problem first. And that is when the card shows out a signal initially, but after you install drivers, the screen just goes black. Now this can sometimes be accompanied by the fans just simply going full speed and pretty much, yeah, you gotta turn your PC off, take the GPU out, and sometimes you'll be trying to reinsert the GPU in different PCIe slots, thinking you're going out of your mind, trying different display ports, but to no avail. Now, I have seen this happen on both Nvidia cards and AMD cards in the past. I actually find it is a bit more common on AMD cards than it is on the Nvidia cards. And so what I think it is, is I just think it's actually a faulty GPU inherently where once the drivers install something inside the GPU, just doesn't work properly and the whole thing goes kabonkers. So let's move over now to the second problem which I actually have the most success fixing. This one you guys can easily do, you don't need a heat gun to do this, and that is just taking off either surface rust or debris or conductive thermal paste on the GPU. Now, you see me clean up the GPUs a lot. This is easily in the past when I've cleaned up GPUs, I've had the most success bringing cards back to life. Whether it be uh, just plugging, inserting a cable in and out of the uh, connection ports here, like probably like 30 or 40 times just to get that surface rust off, or whether it's finding surface rust on the back or it's a faulty back plate, or you take the cooler off and someone's used conductive thermal paste, then you'll know if they've used conductive thermal paste because it'll be very shiny. That's usually a good indication that it's got metals inside and then hence it reflects the light. So the easiest way to do this is just clean down the whole GPU. Now I do prefer to use multi-purpose spray here. If you do use brake cleaner, it's usually only on the actual GPU die itself if you've got that conductive thermal paste. And so that'll remove all that and then you blow it down with say a data vac or something and make sure the card's dry. But with multi-purpose spray, I've found, or well, that's WD-40, I've found that you can just spray this stuff all over and if it's still wet, it doesn't matter, the card boots up. And that's because it's got no capacitive or conductive materials in it and so it keeps working absolutely fine so this second problem that i come into here as we saw with this card right here the gtx 980 i brought this back from the brink and so i believe it was the actual connection ports and uh, some surface rust on the pcie contact bridge and so that was a card that's now working gtx 980 i got it for free and the person who actually gave us this 780 as well thought that this 780 worked fine, but this 980 was a dud. So the irony of it is this 780, and we'll get on to the next problem here, ended up not working out for me. Now, this gave out a signal. So this is problem number three, and this is faulty VRAM. And I have seen this in the past. Most notably, you probably noticed when I did the RTX 2080 Ti video, that had some faulty VRAM on it. Now, I managed to downclock the card enough without even flashing the BIOS, and it managed to work still. So this one works in that either the memory has degraded so much that it doesn't work at the default speeds, or it's a faulty chip where it just doesn't work at those speeds either. Now, unfortunately, this card right here, this is the GTX 780, this has faulty VRAM on board. I could tell when I started downclocking the memory, it started actually running the benchmark for, a, I guess, a few more seconds than it otherwise would. But as soon as it had default memory speeds, it just clonked out straight away. Now, I tried actually making a custom BIOS for this uh, card right here. First, I started off with lowering the clocks a good 30%. Then after that, I dropped it down to 50% less VRAM clock speeds, and it still clonked out. Even though this time around, it would display higher resolutions and it would install properly, it was just in the end, it had faulty VRAM that we're gonna try soon with the heat gun to try and just uh, bring it back. So you know if it's a VRAM problem or even a GPU core problem if you start seeing artifacting or weird glitching on the screen. And so the easiest way to get around this is to install a program called MSI Afterburner. And once you've got this installed and your card's installed and you're just idling, you can then downclock both the core and the memory and then see if the card works properly after that. If it does work properly after that, you've got then two options. You can either save the profile and boot up Windows every time and it'll load up that profile that's underclocked. Or of course, you can try putting on a custom BIOS with those underclock settings so you don't have to worry in the future about having to uh, install Afterburner and have it running the speeds. But unfortunately for this card here, it is the one of the few that can't work with faulty VRAM. Of course, 
The other option is if it's got faulty VRAM, it may just give us the uh, next sign here, which is problem number four, and that's completely no signal. This is uh, known as a B2 error. So if you've got a BIOS readout code on your motherboard, it'll usually say B2. We saw this with this card here, the R9-270. Uh, so this one just gave out a B2, we cleaned it up, still gave out a B2. Basically that means that the uh, actual card itself is not even initializing with the computer. So it doesn't work. Something's really faulty to the point where this card can't even boot up its VGA BIOS to get a signal out. And so the only two methods that I know is that something's missing on the back of the GPU or chips rusted out to the point where it no longer works properly and you've got to re-solder something on to fix it, uh, which in this case, I am terrible at soldering, especially when it comes to micro-soldering. Like, I can solder two wires together, but that's about it. That's as far as my soldering skills go. When it comes to micro-soldering, you need some really good hands for that. And uh, yeah, I've never actually brought a card back from micro soldering. But the next problem you can try here is using a heat gun, which I've done in the past. I've done actually a full video on this. I'll put the link up here to that, where it's a controversial one. Some people say that it doesn't work. I've actually done it myself and it's worked. I've had a GPU come back and then it's worked after that for actually to this day, I think over a good year and a half now. It basically, at least for me, can work in rare circumstances. I find when I do the heat gun method, it's about a 10% hit ratio. So it's got a very low success rate, but that being said, it's a last resort. You've got nothing else to lose with it, just like these three GPUs on the table here. So with that said, let's pull out this heat gun and then uh, see if we can get these cards back and then move over to a conclusion for you guys. And now returning with the heat gun method, we got some really good news and that is this R9-270 is back to life and it appears to be working absolutely fine. Though one thing I will say about this cooler here, I don't know how coolers like this were okay for a card like this. As you saw, I just started running a benchmark and it was already getting near 80 degrees in like a minute. So I'll probably replace this cooler right here with something a lot better because it's just not going to work in the long run. And in fact, this probably this graphics card right here, uh, failed because of insufficient cooling, which I did notice in a previous card that I tested years ago with an R9-270 as well. It had a similar kind of really weak cooler, and that was displaying some really hot temperatures. So that's good news. That one is fixed, surprisingly. Uh, this is what we're talking about when you've just got completely no signal in the problems before, the B2. Now this was passing B2, drivers are installing fine, and it's good to go. But this RX 580 here is one of the most interesting because I've never seen this uh, come back to life. It had that driver problem where it installed the drivers and then the fans started spinning up full speed. But it installed the drivers this time. It started kind of semi-working in that when we pulled up the Heaven benchmark, the frames were just constantly like up and down, dipping like a yo-yo. I then tried to put in a very conservative RX 470 BIOS on this and it's still giving out the same problem. So this card here is kind of like semi-working. I'd have to look at it uh, closer to see what exactly is wrong with it, but I believe it's just a card that's not going to work. It might be good for say a display card where it's got five display outs, and maybe it's good for an office PC going forward. But this GTX 780 here, this one, unfortunately nothing really changed after the heat gun method. It didn't work beforehand properly and it still doesn't work afterwards. So basically with faulty GPUs, the bottom line is if you've tried everything and you've got nothing to lose, then definitely give it a go. I'd say my heat gun methodology has improved over time where I feel the sweet spot is around six to eight minutes on just pretty much heating up the card. Make sure you wear a mask because there's gonna be a really weird smell coming off these things and they do get pretty hot. So you have to let them cool down for a good 20 minutes after you do this, then just reapply the cooler and give it a go. So basically, if you have problems with the GPU, you can try and identify what the problem is and then go through some of the steps that we did here today. And if you've got nothing to lose, you've got nothing to lose. So these four cards were just donated to me. People just thought they would have no chance of working again. 
And then I applied some of the tech yes loving methodology here and we got two or four working, which honestly is a bit of a higher success rate than I'm used to. But that being said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comment section below, have you come into some other problems? Also, what are some other fixes that you guys use if you've fixed a graphics card in the past? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And speaking of thoughts and opinions, we have the question of the day, which comes from Mr. Knight Pona, and it ties in perfectly with today's video. They say, I want to fix my Vega 56. I updated the BIOS when COD Warfare released and now Rainbow Six Siege stutters even if I roll back or system restore. It was fine before I messed with the BIOS. Also coil wind from the GC times up with the stuttering. So basically if you guys have uh, tinkered with the V BIOS especially, then just reflash it back to the original V BIOS. I'll put the link to a video up here where I show you guys how to flash, especially with an AMD card via ATI flash. Also on that note, after you've done the reflash, you can also try doing a DDU, which is a direct driver on installer, and then completely installing uh, the drivers again. Or if that doesn't work, you can try reinstalling your OS just to give it the best chance it has. After that, something may have gone faulty on the GPU, in which case you can try the steps outlined in today's video, especially in this case with the Vega 56. I just try underclocking it first if you've tried those things beforehand. And who knows, you might have that GPU working absolutely fine again. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying the content, then you know what to do, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.